<laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much for coming to the public scoping meeting of the River Road Ecosystem Restoration Project. We are kicking off a project in collaboration with the City of San Antonio Parks Department, the San Antonio River Authority, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. A real quick housekeeping note. Tonight's uh, meeting will be filmed in its entirety by NowCast SA, and the video, the full length of it, will be available via YouTube. <laughs> so let's kick off, off tonight with an overview of our project partners. This is the collaboration uh, between uh, COSA Parks, and we have Bill Pinnell in the back, who is our project manager. And also uh, from San, City of San Antonio TCI, uh, Stormwater, we have Jake Powell, who's helping us out. And we also need to acknowledge uh, that we are partnering with funding from Bear County. Also, we do need to, to give a very, very special thanks to Congressman Doggett's office for their endurance and all of their hard work many years of working with the Corps to bring this project to fruition. And as well as a big thank you to all the elected officials who have helped us through this process um, to gather funding and bring all the partners together. Uh, real quick, uh, I'd like to acknowledge my bosses from our board of directors, Deborah uh, Deb Bulner Pro, Jim Campbell, and Louis Galvan. And our general manager, Suzanne Scott. Army Corps of Engineers tonight, we have our project manager, Andrew Johnson, our planner, Zach Rogers, and our biologist, Justice Watson. So there's a huge Sarah team that has been working for a number of years on this project. I'm sure that many of y'all have seen them in the river, working in your neighborhood. Uh, survey, biological sampling, all of our engineers and scientists who have been working very hard for a number of years, you're going to continue to see them out there. So when you see that Sarah shirt, just give us a wave and don't be afraid to come talk to us. We'd be more than happy to talk to you about the project. In particular, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact Caitlin. She's our coordinator for all of our public outreach on the project. And speaking of that, we just wanted to let y'all know that there's a lot of stakeholders that are involved in this project. And you can see from the long list that we've been coordinating with a lot of different entities to get to this point. And we're going to continue to, to coordinate with you and many others uh, through the project from feasibility as far as it goes. So let's actually talk about the project. This is the project limits of the, our feasibility study. It goes roughly from Mulberry all the way down to 281, uh, roughly from Avenue A through uh, River Road, including Davis or Allison Park. I always get <laughs> And many of you know, we we this project has a long history. I was thinking about how to introduce this tonight, and all I could think of was, we're back. <laughs> you know, this project has been going since 2008 with its conceptualization through the River Improvements Project. There's a lot of different studies of the biodiversity, traffic, the archaeological that have built to get us to this point. You know, we tried through a number of different funding mechanisms, including TCQ, to try to improve some water quality, and we've had a couple of challenges along the way. But we've gotten to the point where the Army Corps of Engineers is working with us to try to study the feasibility of doing a project. And we're very positive that we're going to be able to get this project uh, through the feasibility stage and see what we can do with it. And when I say see what we can do with it, let me just be clear. Sarah's goal from the get-go 
is to restore the aquatic and riparian ecosystem of the San Antonio River by restoring the, the function of the stream and the area around it. For me personally, this is a really important project because you'll often hear that this is the last remaining vestige of natural area of the upper San Antonio River. So we have a huge responsibility tonight and through the project. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Justice so she can talk about the feasibility study and the project as a whole. Well, you guys are back, and uh, this is my first time working with the project, so uh, really excited about it. Hope you guys are excited about it. I think it's a really good project. Um, I love ecosystem restoration, so hopefully it'll be something that y'all could enjoy and give us comments on. Um, I'd like to start off with um, saying I hope you guys sign the sign-in sheet, and in the back we also have comment cards. Um, any comments should be please submit them in writing. If they're not sub submitted in writing, we can't accept them. So if you have anything to say to us, please write it down. You guys have already seen the study area. Uh, so the purpose of this meeting is um, in regards to our envi environmental assessment and just getting public um, input. So we always want public input. We always want to coordinate with other agencies. Uh, we want to share the information, partial information with the public, make sure you guys know what's going on. Uh, make sure you guys can share maybe things that you might think is a good idea or maybe something's a bad idea and we may not know about it until the very end. So we always like to get that input up front. We want to discuss our environmental concerns and any local conditions you guys know. So the National Environmental Policy Act uh, guides our impact analysis. So whenever uh, I'm writing up our environmental assessment, I'm going to be talking about the impacts of the area. So I'll be talking about the existing conditions, um, any future with project conditions, future without project conditions. This would also um, include our habitat analysis. So a few weeks ago, we went out to the field and um, did some measurements on the stream quality and the riparian areas to kind of see what's going on out there and kind of develop some models to go along with that. So this project is a CAP project, which is also known as a continu Continuing Authorities Program. Uh, uh, so this is a study process. So we started off with this um, in, we got our feasible, wait, federal cost sharing agreement signed in 2018. That was our kind of check off on being able to start this project with the federal government. Um, we got the funds in February of this year, so we were able to kind of get rolling on the get rolling on everything. So we already done a federal interest determination. So with the CAP project, you can get your federal interests uh, determined. So that kind of tells you what your problems, your goals, your opportunities are going to be. Um, right now, we're in, in between that federal interest determination and then the major subordinate command decision meeting. So at that decision meeting, um, our command would tell us if they agree with this um, tentatively selected plan. And that plan would come away from the alternative plans that we've developed. So that would be a combination of different measures and opportunities that we can do. And I'll discuss that further in the slides. And the final result would just be submitting our final draft document and going along with the recommended plan. So you guys may be all, all, already be aware, but uh, this section of the river road is um, severely degraded with erosion. There's a lot of sedimentation. Um, sedimentation can affect the water quality, can affect your wildlife habitat. Um, we've got a very narrow riparian area. So all, all of that um, sedimentation erosion is really impacting uh, the areas around it. So you can, it's starting, that river bank starting to go around and everything. So um, that's something we want to look at. And also with the proliferation of the expansion of invasive species, we just want to make sure that um, invasive species are kind of narrowed out of the area. Uh, we can do different controls on that. Um, and we also, so with this, we want to look at the objectives and we also have different opportunities. So the main objective for the US Army Corps of Engineers is to restore the aquatic ecosystem function and structure through a road section of San Antonio River. So pretty much the same thing as uh, San Antonio River Authority. Um, and also opportunities would just be to restore um, and provide additional recreation and ecosystem and uh, ecotourism benefits to, to everybody in the community. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of erosion along this section of the San Antonio River. Uh, we 
we've got erosion at inflow points, we've got a lot of drainage that's cutting into the banks. Um, you guys may be aware of that final loop going around on Avenue A. Um, that's, the picture to the left is a picture of that area. Um, you know, we need these riparian, riparian uh, vegetation, vegetated areas to prevent erosion. So that holds in the riverbank. So when you have, you know, pictures like this right along your riverbank, that's not a good sign. We need to build up that and kind of keep all these problems from happening. Can I ask a question? Do you mind uh, uh, defining what you I'm sorry, riparian is um, like oak trees. Um, it's just like a vegetated area with large um, vegetation, like along riverbanks and stuff like that. So the picture to the left is the, um, the low water crossing further down along uh, that turnaround of Avenue A. Um, that's a non-functioning culvert. So uh, we get, we're getting a lot of pooling in this area. Um, Large pooling is really not a good thing for a river ecosystem. You need to have pool, ripple, run. So ripple would be kind of water going along the rocks. Run would just be a straight go through without um, any stopping and pooling, you know, just a big giant uh, pool of water. Uh, the picture to the right is the uh, picture of a sandbar that has been created because the river is diverting itself. Uh, so that's one of the things we want to look at. Uh, We've got some ideas for this little area, maybe possibly, you know, doing little emergent wetland plantings. Uh, so that would just be, you know, plants that can be planted in the water and they grow through, grow through. So potential measures. So measures are something that the Corps of Engineers can do, Sarah can do, to fix a problem. So we just call it as like, uh, we can do things like invasive species management. Uh, that would include. This giant cane right here that's all along the river um, that can cause a uh, problem with water quality, that can cause a problem with your native wildlife. If you have a lack of native plants, you're going to have some, you're going to start having problems with your native wildlife. And if any of you guys are birders or anything like that, you know that you have to have native plants um, around to be for the habitat. We're also thinking about maybe possibly doing the modification of man-made or natural structures within the river, uh, modification of possibly the low water crossing at the lower end of the dam or lower end of the river, uh, possibly um, inputting J-hooks. J-hook would be a, um, a rock system that would create a ripple, so kind of a, creating more natural structures within the stream without channelizing it, because we don't want to channelize this river because it's one of the last remaining segments. We can have the possibility of mod modifying pedestrian access, um, the parking situation, um, modification maybe of the fishing areas. Um, you know, one of the big concerns is the roads that are going along that river. If we can expand the vegetated areas, maybe look at removing some of those roads, um, that would just increase our um, water quality and um, our river ecosystem. The picture right here is a, an example of a wood nut box. Um, that would just be one <coughs> example of a nesting structure that we could use. We can install bat boxes, bluebird boxes. You know, we have, there's a plethora of things that we can do to kind of increase wildlife, nesting structures, platforms, um, things like that. So the next steps. Uh, we've been working on developing these measures. Uh, we want to build alternatives. So alternatives would just be a combination of these measures and co combining these into plans. So uh, once we kind of have plans through, we can do a cost analysis. So we can compare our benefits to our cost, and that kind of gives us a bar graph on uh, where we want to end up. So the more benefit you have, um, you know, the better, like the more likely that project is going to succeed. But you have to compare that to cost as well. Um, everything's usually about money, right? So we gotta we gotta make sure we're doing the right thing. Um, the next step would be um, selecting a tentatively, tentatively selected plan, and we would recommend that to our uh, major subordinate command. So if they would like if they like that idea, then we can move forward with our uh, project. Uh, the Corps of Engineers is a federal um, organization, so we always have to coordinate with 
um, our local agencies. We need to coordinate with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, making sure we're following, you know, threatened and endangered species regulations, things of that nature. Um, and then we would, after that, we'd complete our feasibility phase. So uh, we do expect this project to end roughly around the end of um, 2020. So like I said, you can submit your written comments. Uh, I've got the comment forms up here. You can submit them to me at the end of this meeting. Um, you can mail them to me. My uh, information is up there. They're also on the storyboards in the back if you need to take a picture or anything. Uh, and you can also email your comments to this uh, riverroader at usace.army.mil. Um, that is a group email, so I can receive any emails that you want to send to us. Uh, I'd like to end my presentation by saying uh, we can now break and go over to the storyboard so we can kind of get one-on-one -on -one questions and answers. Thank you. Real quick, I would like to just give you an overview of where we are in the project. So tonight is the start of the public comment period for uh, our public scoping for the feasibility study. In the feasibility study, what the Army Corps of Engineers is going to be looking at is particular alternatives. And you saw some potential ideas or measures that could be used to develop an alternative. When they look at the alternatives, their next step is going to be to evaluate the ecological impact of, of various plans and the cost of those plans. That analysis is going to go into a cost-benefit process and then be recommended through their major uh, subordinate command. At that point, if it's recommended, and it's a viable project, then it would move forward to consideration for funding for design and construction. So tonight, we're really talking about a tentative alternative. And that brings me to y'all's responsibility tonight. We need your input, your comments, your ideas. And because of the process of, of the federal government, we need those comments to be written. So it's very important that y'all pick up a comment sheet. Y'all go ahead, give us some feedback. Please go over to the storyboard, talk to uh, the various members that are helping out with the project, ask us questions, write down your ideas, and please get them into the public comment. Karen, so we have some time to look at this beside the storyboard, or you can send out sort of a tentative plan or your ideas, so we can, like, because we couldn't really follow everything that you would like to do, and sort of know that, but, so we can look at it. So, yes, we will have some time. We'll be willing to talk you through at the various storyboards. Um, so, outside of that, we will be coming back to you um, as part of the process uh, just to let you know how things have gone, what uh, measures are, are going through the process and being evaluated, and how they're, how they're ending up in the mix. I think maybe they, right now you don't have anything more than what they have today. They haven't really gotten to a point where they have anything that they've stuck. This, this is this is the very beginning of the process. I think what they're saying is these are the ideas that they sort of put out here, the problems and the things they're starting to look at. So uh, your information today will help inform them as they go forward in looking at those ideas. They didn't want they haven't developed the ideas yet. Tonight is this is that's why this is so key. This is very much the starting pistol for this project. We're we're at the very beginning. Okay. Can I? <laughs> Can somebody else? I, I would rather I would rather not adjourn to storyboards because that's such a scattering of input and information. Whereas in a larger body, concerns or questions can be answered and observed by everyone. I'm going to leave that to um, our project manager with the core because there is federal requirements um, for this process that has to follow a particular sequence legally. Right. So, you know, we've elected to do storyboards today, and so we're going to stick with our plan. And we'll move on. Okay. At least answer the question. So, other questions? Any other questions? If you, yeah. My, in watching this and seeing a little bit, it seems one of the big concerns that I have is it might be the low water crossing would be eliminated. Is this more than a fact? So that is one of the potential measures that has been 
tentatively identified. This is definitely at the start. There's a lot of uh, a lot of things to consider with that decision. I think there's a lot of voices that need that needs to be heard. We need to keep in mind that the purpose of the project is to to restore the aquatic habitat and a functioning riparian system, which is going to require that there's trade-offs. We just need to, to go through the process to have the public input to identify appropriate measures. Yes, in the last four years, this is the third meeting that I've attended, and each time you've indicated that this is a starting point of what was going to happen. In the meantime, uh, projects get started, or say they're getting started, and they don't get started, and next thing uh, we are told is uh, Army Corps of Engineers took back some money, Bear County did not come through with others, yet at the same time, San Pedro Creek is doing fine, the Mission Reach is doing fine, and I grew up in that area, and during the summertime, there's a trickle that goes down uh, by San Pedro Creek and all. And this is a river river. And yet, in all these years, nothing has been done. Things are started. No, we're told that things are started. Yeah. We have yet to see. So, with our process, with this particular process, as far as the cap study process, we will... There's... Few um, circumstances that would not allow us to take it all the way at least through the feasibility process. At the end of the feasibility process, we then take our determination up to, as it said, our, our higher command and they approve our selected plan or not. Um, depending on how that goes, we may say, like if you saw on here or some of um, on here, that one of the projects could be, or one of the alternatives could be a no action alternative. If we had that alternative, that would be something that would say, hey, none of these alternatives that we've come up with had the economic or ecological benefits. But there's also, I mean, that is one of the ways that this project could possibly result in something like that. But we will be going through the feasibility, at least portion of this. After the feasibility portion, we then have two other portions. If we have approval, um, that would go through the design phase and the construction phase of the project. And then that would see a pull into the cap study part of the project. I believe before there hasn't been a cap study yeah. on this, correct? Yeah. Let me just explain because we know the confusion because this project has started and stopped many times, and we we feel your pain. Um, the issue is that when we started the last time we were here with the TCEQ, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. That project was really just focused on water quality. We weren't able to be as comprehensive in the study. Like what some of the comments that we were receiving back from the community is that y'all really wanted us to look more at some of the issues that, that we're able to look at with the Corps of Engineers more from an ecosystem restoration perspective, more of a holistic approach to the project. So we went back and uh, we really started pushing more, because we were trying to get money from the Corps of Engineers, as she mentioned, for a long time, and it was going through fits and starts, as it does sometimes to the federal government. But we really got, uh, uh, Congressman Doggett really went to bat to say, we need to get this funding, because it had been going back and forth, and we really weren't securing it, because we wanted to make sure that we were able to address more comprehensively the types of improvements that y'all really wanted us to look at. So that's why we sort of moved away from the TCEQ program and moved really more aggressively to the Corps of Engineers Ecosystem Restoration. So we apologize about the fits and starts, but we feel like this scope, based on the feedback that we received last time, is more in line with what we believe y'all want us to look at. So that's why we, oops, everyone's getting Amber Alert. Um, so that's, uh, we really, this, this is more directed in the way that y'all want us to, to be looking. So I apologize, but I think we're on the right path, fine. And as far as our partners, I think they're all very interested. Judge Wolf is very interested in what this study is going to show. I know the city of San Antonio, you can obviously see 
We have members from the city here. Uh, there, there's a lot of, of interest right now in what's happening in Brackenridge Park uh, as well as this area. So I do think that the heightened awareness <coughs> after we've done the master planning, of course the Brackenridge Conservancy is, is going through a, a cultural landscape report pro uh, process right now. So I do think the heightened interest is also allowing for this project to get more feedback. So I uh, appreciate the patience, but I do think we're on the right track now. Thank you. Um, I have a, a kind of a point of process to direct towards the project director. Um, I think it's great that we go and look at this, but I don't think you've worked with this particular body of people before, and it would be behoove you, trust me, if after we all look at that and talk to the in, to you all as individuals that we get back together so that we have the benefit of hearing each other's concerns. This is an incredibly engaged neighborhood, also a very activist-driven neighborhood and a very vocal neighborhood. And we want this as much as you do, but we have to all be on the same page. And hearing collectively what people's concerns and responses are is going to move the project forward with the support of this body of people rather than in fits and starts without the support of this group. And we live in, in this environment. And we've tried to be good stewards we haven't had the resources to do it. So you want us to help do this. You want us to support our lawmakers and our, our leaders who are moving us forward. Please allow us to do that. So um, absolutely, uh, uh, we support everybody's interest in the project. And um, you know, not everybody wants to get up and, and ask a question in front of a, a crowd. So. Oh, yeah. But you know, if, if we still want to have that opportunity with the, the storyboards for everybody to come over and uh, take a look at the particular presentation, and then we can talk. I think you should say 20 minutes or whatever, and then we'll come back to you. That's what I think. Yeah, that's probably Is that possible? Let me put it this way. Verbal comments will not be officially part of the federal record. So as long as everyone will agree that they will get their official comments on paper for me, then we can continue with questions. Yes? I just was, will the storyboards be on the video? Because I had the neighbors who weren't able to be here tonight. Will, they be on, will the storyboards be on YouTube? So the fantastic thing is that the storyboards are exactly what you saw in the presentation. Oh. So you've seen them. They'll be, they'll be in the video. Um, it's just giving you an opportunity to look closer at them, look in more detail, and have one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with the uh, project uh, members. So I'm impressed that there's a good group of people here. What's your current funding for this phase of the uh, uh, project? So with the feasibility study, it is a 50-50 cost share between the Army Corps of Engineers and the San Antonio River Authority. Mm -hmm. And thus far, the San Antonio River Authority has uh, put up $261,000 uh, towards the feasibility study. Thank you. Is the state of Texas not uh, contributing anything uh, contributing uh, financially, or yeah, financially. no, not at this point. They are not part of the sponsor group. Ms. Manal. So, um, the new uh, floodplain lines. Uh, do you all does the core already have the information about the new floodplain uh, parameters in River Road, the Atlas 14? Has that been completed? has been completed and there's new rainfall levels for everywhere across the state of Texas. Um, so if we need to use that information, we absolutely will. We'll use the most up-to-date version of it. But the project that's proposed here is an ecosystem restoration project and we're not anticipating any significant changes to the floodplain. So it should neither harm nor benefit uh, 
no change to uh, flooding issues. So you have seen them in our neighborhood there should be no additional areas within like the uh, 100 or 500 year floodplain? Correct. So I just wanted to mention as far as Atlas 14 goes, we have a uh, group with the River Authority that is uh, working with Jake Powell in the back. And Jake, do you want to uh, talk about the, the process that the city is going through? So uh, just briefly, first I want to know that this, uh, when this project, and we, uh, I'm going to be optimistic, when this project becomes a construction project and not just a planning project, that will still have, the project will have to go through permitting the city. And we will make sure that uh, there is no impact, uh, no rise to the flood. That's part of our approval. Our so that's, uh, no matter at the 14 or not, we, we will be part of that. So um, we will also be part of this, this uh, feasibility study as needed for review to look at options to make sure there's no, uh, no issues. We know that it's a sensitive area downstream from the dam, and we'll keep all of that in, in mind as we go through. And in the meantime, the River Authority is working to, to consume that data, look at the updates, and look at what's needed in our hydrology and hydraulics models that do, that do allow us to delineate the floodplain and gain knowledge there. And we're making updates and working very hard um, in our remap of the floodplains. So that's going to be contributing to the eventual project, as Jay said. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of issues. Uh, the first has to, to do with uh, uh, understanding the of two terms, which I'm wondering if are they're interchangeable, and that's uh, eco uh, restoration and steam restoration. Uh, they're not mutually exclusive to me. But anyway, uh, my, my first intent in, in talking with uh, Doggett many, many years ago was that we wanted a stream restoration project. So stream restoration is a small component of ecosystem restoration. But it's one of those things that like the movie, if you build it, it will come. If we get it right with the river, if we get the form and the function so that it, it can be uh, safely conveying water and sediment so we don't have the erosion issues, if we get the vegetation and there is a tool, then the habitat, the riparian and aquatic species, they will come, they will come back. So we're using stream restoration as a tool of ecosystem restoration for this project. Okay, I, I, I agree with that. Uh, anyway, that's the way I do things. Uh, the other thing is that there's a human safety uh, element here that nobody wants to talk about. It, to me, it's the elephant in the room. But uh, if you drive six feet off of River Road, uh, there's a 25-foot vertical bank down the street. And, you know, I want the city to come out there and put guardrails in there. You know, they're going to drill the holes for the guardrails and the rest of the bank's just going to cave in. But, you know, some, some, somebody's got to face up to the immediacy of, of this issue somehow. So, first of all, please, please make sure that you write that down on your comment card so it does get into the federal record as one of the important concerns of the community. When I, when I mentioned that, you know, we have to get the form and function right, this is a perfect example of how, this sh how the river is experiencing erosion, how it's stressed, and we're trying to address that through this, uh, through this project. And we need to capture y'all's thoughts and your concerns in regards to that. So please make sure you get that in your comment cards. Other questions? All right. Please... Go through and um, talk to the different uh, project uh, members, look at the, the details. Rain in the back uh, has the comment cards. We definitely need to get your written comments. And we will uh, stay here for, an, uh, let's say, 20 minutes. Uh,
um, to answer any final questions that y'all might have as a group. And how many minutes do we have to go through the story? So, I think 20 minutes, unless the group says differently. So, right now it is 6.45. So, at uh, 7.05, we will reconvene. Thank you. Um, are there any comments or discussions that y'all would like to put forward? I would like to ask a question. Is, there, is whoever is designing what they think they're going to do with the last little natural reach of the river, are they the same team that did what's down by the Blue Star? So we don't have a design team just yet. We're in, purely in the feasibility stage. Once this goes through the process with the federal government, then that will, if it is selected for a, uh, one of the alternative plans is selected for a project, then it will start the design and eventually construction project. We had the United States Riparian team come to the ranch and help us with some areas, and they wanted to see what was done down by the Blue Star. And we went down there with somebody, I don't know, Sarah, somebody gave them a, was going to give them a little tour. And when they saw what San Antonio had done down there, they were so disgusted by it. It is so not ecologically riparian repaired at all, not even sort of. They wouldn't even stay for the end of the tour. They said, get us out of here, get us out of here, get us out of here, and we left. So I just hope that whoever you are using to guide you on what you do with the last natural reach of the San Antonio River, you get a true riparian expert team to guide you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? How can we find this on YouTube? So back at the back, there are these small uh, oh, wires. Please feel free to pick it one up so that you can access the YouTube. We're also <laughs> going to post it on the River Road Neighborhood Association yeah. Facebook page, and we're going to email it around to everybody, and everyone can just spread the word. And, and also, Sarah will have a, a copy of it as soon as so it's we'll, uh, we'll receive a, co a copy and word oh. to make that accessible. Other comments? Questions? All right, well, thank you all very much for your participation tonight. Please, um, the, there's a 30 day open comment period. Uh, if, you, if something occurs to you that you haven't written down tonight, there's justice. You can email her, you can mail her. Um, please uh, give us your input and feedback. And thank you very much for coming tonight. So, thank you. so you can't email information in, you have to write it and email this. Is that correct? So you can email as well. You can email as long as it's written. That's, that's just, so that's that's just the saying. method of so being able to write, write an email to that email address saying what you think. You have to do it. No, no, no you don't have to use that. You can write an informal email and and you can say, Dear Justice, yeah. and give us your feedback as long as it goes to uh, River Road ER at you say it's that army dot milk. All right, we're told differently back here. Okay. I'd also like to say uh, public scoping never ends on these projects. Uh, we're just accepting the written comments for 30 days. Um, you can always still send me stuff and I can look at it, but the comments are what can be integrated into our environmental assessment, so we can actually respond to those in writing. So just for your awareness. Did you notice that on your on your address, Fort Worth, Texas, is not on this it's it's post office box. Yes. Fort Worth, and that's so I apologize. So, Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> Thank you. 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 I think it's really important to just close the circle of communication and say that when the, the comments are submitted, either through the email address or through these written comments that we're going to turn in, that all of the comments will be considered as part of the planning process. We're not just sending them in. I, that wasn't clearly articulated. And it's really important in the public process that the input from the public be seriously considered. As, as, as per the memorandum, uh, the mem, uh, the, what's it called? The WUM, what, no, no, the MU, what? The, the memorandum, memorandum of understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yeah. 
All right, well, thank you all very much for coming tonight, and we look forward to working with you in the future.